give, save him, etc. if I go the right direction. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We're actually a couple of minutes early, but I think that's just fine. I'm Doug Kimmel, one of the deacons this morning, and I'm happy to welcome all of you to the Union Congregational Church of Hancock. My pronouns are he and his. And we want to especially welcome today the Montour musicians, Harris and Laura. Please uh, see their bios in the bulletin. And uh, Harris is going to be conducting this afternoon one of the pieces. Uh, the concerts, of course, are at 5 o'clock at the 4 studio. Uh, I'm sure there are still seats available, but... Uh, we Very are... few. I heard it was almost sold out. Wow. So you might want to make your reservations online in advance at montomusic.org. And you can also check the program. I think that's online now as well. 
It's a wonderful orchestra this year and a very special year, so we're delighted to have the musicians with us again and certainly invite everyone to, to come and attend. Along that line, the Monteau Scholarship Concert will be held here in our sanctuary on Thursday, July 27th at 3 o'clock. That's a scholarship concert for the uh, students. So mark that on your calendar, Thursday, July 27th at 3 o'clock. The acoustics are wonderful and the uh, musicians all play very interesting works and it's very entertaining and wonderful. So I urge everyone to come and bring several friends and neighbors. Those online are invited to remain after the service for Zoom fellowship time. We'll have coffee and tea in the fellowship hall after the service. Beginning next Sunday, we will switch from Zoom to Facebook Live for the summer months. And so see the weekly messenger or ask Vicki or TJ for a reminder of how to find the online service. Trustees will meet on Wednesday, July 5th at 12 o'clock at the church and on Zoom. Do you have anything to add, Peggy, about the trustee meeting? Well, okay. But thanks for the announcement. <laughs> uh, the bylaws subcommittee will be meeting on Wednesday, July 12th at noon at the church and on Zoom. And deacons will meet this Friday, July 14th. No, not, not the next Friday, a week from Friday, July 14th at 12 o'clock at the church and also on Zoom. The Union Congregational Church of Hancock, United Church of Christ, will hold a special congregational meeting on Sunday, July 16th, 2023, immediately following the morning's worship service for the following purpose. To approve the treasurer to take funds from the Camden Wealth Management Cash Reserves to pay the overage of replacing the septic system at the parsonage, and to act on any other business that may come before the congregation. Signed by Jeannie Edwards, clerk, June 18th, 2023. Are there any announcements from the congregation? All right. Are there any on Zoom? I see no one. Okay. We have some birthdays and anniversaries during the first half of July. July 1st, yesterday, Allison Bowden. Today, July 2nd, Joyce Cornwell. July 7th, Betty Lewis. July 8th, Joey Espling. 14th is Brooklyn Harriman. And the 16th is Morgan Espling. Let us center ourselves now and prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
morning. Welcome. Good morning. I'm Reverend T.J. Mack. My pronouns are she and her. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock. We are an open and affirming member of the United Church of Christ denomination. We invite you, no matter who you are or who you are becoming on this journey of life, to participate fully with us in the life of this church and in the life of this community. Come as you are. Come as your authentic self. You are welcome, you are loved, and we hope that you come to love us as well. No matter your faith background, no matter your gender identity, no matter where you were born, no matter the color of your skin, just no matter, everyone is welcome here. And I'm glad you here, are here with us today in our pews or online, joining us, bringing us beautiful music. I'm glad we are all here and together. Let's stand in body or spirit and join in singing our introit, which is in our bulletin. Praise the Lord the Almighty, the first verse. sing to God a song of joy. For we have been greeted by our God. O dance for God, a waltz of welcome. For we have been graced by our God. O create for God a portrait of hope. For we have been inspired by our God. Let us offer one another the sign of peace through the American Sign Language. Peace be with you. You, you can remain standing or be seated, whatever you're comfortable with. We're going to light a candle for peace and justice. And I try to find something to read that is relevant each week. This week, um, with our theme of welcome, this came to mind. Um, in order to be welcoming, often we need to humble ourselves. So this is titled, Your Best. At your worst, you are at your best because you are closest to surrendering. 
from the book, I Found God in My Loneliness, by Ray Sowards. Let us stand again in body or spirit. We will sing God of Grace and God of Glory in our red hymnal number 477. You patiently wait for us on the threshold of your ground, ready to welcome us as we step across the doorway of your kingdom. As we see your inviting lights, we feel the warmth of your love. May we open doors to your realm. May we be your encouraging grace and your melodic voice of welcome in a world filled with harsh tones. Time for our children's message, and I don't see any terribly young people here. <laughs> Pat, Pat, I'm just gonna <laughs> about a terribly old Can I get a microphone for Pat? <laughs> I've been set before for a week now, so I Seeing all the other faces that welcome, not just my heart, 
be welcome. And so we offer that to others so they have that warmth in their hearts as well. And let us let us offer a prayer. We never tire, God, of welcome, whether we are three weeks old or many decades old. We appreciate welcome, we love welcome, we need welcome. And we are grateful for this congregation, for this place, and for these people, and for everywhere in the world that we are welcome. Amen. Amen. The uh, scripture today is uh, Matthew 10th chapter, verses 4 through 42, from um, the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. And the poem is from a 14th century Sufi poet named Hafiz. I sometimes forget that I was created for joy. My mind is too busy. My heart is too heavy for me to remember that I've been called to dance, the sacred dance of life. I was created to smile, to love, to be lifted up, and to lift others up. O oh, sacred one, untangle my feet from all that ensnares. Free my soul, that we might dance, and that our dancing might be contagious.
Thank you. That is so beautiful, and I, I like it when we're silent after. The notes just keep dropping. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Barbara, for reading so beautifully for us this morning. When I first read this scripture, what struck me was the familiarity. It is so matter of fact, so plain, so seemingly obvious. Of course we know this. We know how to treat others. We know how to welcome others into our midst. We know what is expected of us. Six times in this paragraph, we hear the word welcome. And three times we hear the word reward. And in between, we are given a few examples, a few examples of whom to welcome or whom it may be difficult to welcome and how we can expect to be rewarded or not. Sometimes the rewards don't seem like rewards. Who do we welcome in these verses? A prophet, one who speaks truth, truths that are often difficult to hear and that are often dangerous to speak. Prophets shine their light on what is and cry out for what should be. It is not easy to welcome prophets among us. Our reward for welcoming a prophet is most likely change, which we are sometimes <laughs> resistant to welcome. Who else is mentioned in the scripture? The righteous, one that is in step with God, dancing to the divine rhythm of the universe. We want to be near these individuals. We want their light to illuminate us along with them. It seems that our reward is simply being near to them. Who else do we need to welcome? According to the scripture, the little ones, which is a descriptor for any of Jesus' disciples. Reward them with kindness, offering a cup of cool water to the poor, weary travelers, doing the work of God, teaching, preaching, and healing in communities. Do we need a tangible reward to get us to welcome people? Do we need a reward to do the right thing? Did the people of first century Palestine need rewards in order to show hospitality to Jesus' disciples as they traveled about teaching and preaching and healing as Jesus commissioned them to do? Well, we may argue that yes, it was helpful then, but we do not live in that same situation now. Most of us are not dependent on the kindness of strangers for our next meal or for a roof over our heads not in our communities, not when we go traveling. Ah, uh, but there's the rub. Some, in fact, far too many, still do rely on the kindness of strangers. Not all of us in these pews, but definitely some of the members in our communities. Whether we have difficulty welcoming someone because they bring a challenging message or because they are simply different than we are and we are hesitant to open the door to them, Jesus' message is clear. Everyone is worthy of our welcome. Everyone is worthy of dignity, respect, and love. Another passage that says this more eloquently is from the Hebrews, the book, of, the book to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 2. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. We have to be careful with the concept of rewards, the second uh, set of repetitive words in this scripture. Does God reward us? If God does, then the flip side must also be true, that God punishes us. I was raised on that theology, but it is not what I believe now. My theology is not so much about rewards or punishments, but about right relationships with God and with one another. Relationships are the reward. The act of welcoming is the reward or the blessing if we try to get away from that reward punishment. Um, 
binary. The blessing for both the one being welcomed and the one offering the welcome. This community knows how to welcome one another. All are welcome. We pronounce it every week at the beginning of our service and we proclaim it on our website. How do we know when our welcome is meeting a need? Well, we can ask and we can hope for an honest response. And we can look around and observe if we are growing not only in numbers, but in diversity. Are we attractive to those different than ourselves? And are we accepting of those different than ourselves? It is an important question to continue asking. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, says Jesus, and whoever welcomes Jesus welcomes the one who sent Jesus. It is all in the name of love. It is all in the name of God. For me, it is a privilege and a blessing to be welcomed into this pulpit every week and to be welcomed into your homes and into your lives. A privilege and a blessing that I know is extended far beyond me in my visits. It extends to your families and your friends and the community members. How do you and I, how do we get beyond the familiar? How do we welcome not only those we know, but welcome the stranger or those different than ourselves? It helps to use our imaginations and it definitely helps to have empathy and compassion. This familiar passage today, hopefully, will help us stretch our welcome further and further into the world, pressing ourselves to ask how we can be more inclusive and welcoming to those different than ourselves. What is one example that illustrates welcoming behaviors? The first answer that came to me is that foster parents and adoptive parents offer a wide welcome, often welcoming little ones from another family, or another community, or another culture. Next week, we in this church, in this sanctuary, will have an opportunity during our worship service to learn about an outreach happening near us, sponsored by many different individuals in many different faith communities in and around Ellsworth. So please join me here next Sunday at nine o'clock in welcoming Art Worcester of St. Andrew Lutheran Church. Art is the coordinator for the Hancock County Neighborhood Support Team, which is dedicated to sponsoring families from Ukraine, finding them housing and providing support as they find employment, enroll their children in school, and navigate the challenges of living in a new country. When all are truly welcomed, the blessings are evident to everyone. When all are truly welcomed, everyone is drawn into the dance. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing Oh How Glorious, Full of Wonder from our black hymnal number 558.
may be seated. Please join me in the prayer of reflection and transformation in our bulletin. Holy Prophet, creating a home for strangers and friends can often take extra effort. Give us an extra boost in our bodies, minds, and souls to be the welcome team in your realm. May we embrace divine hospitality as we care for the ones struggling the most, the ones caring for your creation, and the ones speaking prophetically for you. Amen. God continues to welcome us into the divine realm even when we walk past its doorway. God's magnificent grace refreshes our hearts, inspiring us to turn toward God always. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to quiet our minds and open our hearts to the love of God and to allow that love to move through us and among us. Allow the love to hold our joys, our fears, our hopes, and our concerns. Our God is ever-present and always listening. We offer prayers for our main conference delegates at Synod in Indianapolis, um, especially our Sunrise Association representative, Kathy Woodside. And we offer prayers for Everett's sister, Arlene, and for Coulter Heiler. Jane Preble, William in hospice care, Sally's friends, Cecil and Ann, John Wood, Jim Snyder. Prayers for Marianne. Prayers for Mary Ann, Artie Smollage, Mary Angela's mother, Caroline, Mary Thomas, Trudy Clark. And do we have people in the congregation? Yes, can we bring a microphone up front to Pat? And, and Jean, if you have any prayers, that you can unmute and get my attention, or you can type in the chat, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm glad you're here with us. Thanks. I have three joys in my family to share. Uh, my Brother-in-law George celebrated his 80th birthday yesterday. My sister Janet is finally moving into an apartment in uh, Pennsylvania, and that's the process has begun. And our grandson came in in 100th place with the ninja warriors of the nation. That's, that's Noah? <laughs> no, no, of the world. <laughs> of the ninja world. That's so awesome. All of those joys are so awesome, but that Noah it particularly pleases me. As for continued prayers for an 11-year-old Nathaniel in hospice care. I want to raise a prayer for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community following the Supreme Court decision that effectively said it's legal to discriminate against them if you wish to. Uh, they are very distressed, and uh, I wish them resilience and support of allies. Thank you, Deb. We offer prayers for Debbie and Lincoln and their son-in-law, Aaron, daughter Ashley, and granddaughter, Brielle. Gratitude for Montour musicians in our sanctuary and in our community. Prayers for Finn and Parker and Madison, for Kenny Stratton, Joy and David and Lori and Amy Nickerson. And we ask prayers for Mike and Cindy Merritt, for Sandy Fippen, for Bruce's sister Lynn, for Dave Martin, and for all caregivers. Prayers for Renata's sister-in-law Joanne, Judith Crowley, Austin's cousin Danny, Liz and Jim, Margaret B. Gratitude for foster parents and adoptive parents and all who care for our little ones. And we ask prayers for Debbie Maddox and her Aunt Linda Reed and for Renata and all the women she cares for. Tom and Judy's son Andrew and his family, Betty and her stepdaughter Molly. All individuals and families experiencing addictions for all victims and loved ones of violence. <clears throat> and I offer gratitude for birds and for bird song, and for flowers and flowering trees, and for the rain, 
and most especially for the sunshine. People everywhere that are unsafe, unhoused, hungry, in need of care and compassion. And we offer a few moments for your silent intention for all that is in your heart. Creator of all things seen and unseen, you blew the spirit of Christ into apostles and disciples, captivating us with your steadfast love. We pray that all whom you call into the work of the church may know the presence of your spirit to strengthen, guide, correct, comfort, and challenge. We pray for all whose lives are touched by the church's witness, that they may feel the healing hands of Christ Jesus, serving them with gentleness, kindness, grace, and love. We pray for the world in which we live, that we may be faithful in giving ourselves away for the sake of the gospel. In your spirit, let us show the peace of Christ to a world of violence. Share the bread of heaven with a world that hungers for righteousness. Offer springs of living water to a world that thirsts for justice. And lead the way of truth and life with the gifts of faith, hope, and love until we live into the fullness of your new creation. Let us pray together the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The realm of God asks us to care for our neighbors, from the children who are thirsty to the prophets and other caregivers who need a place to rest. This is our opportunity to use our treasures, talents, and time to ensure all have what they need. May we reflect on the ways we can share and give as we are able.
When we share from our souls, we open our hearts to your works in this world. When we tend to our neighbors who struggle, we care for the Christ in our midst. When we welcome the prophet who shares your love through their advocacy, we care for the spirit moving throughout our world. When we share with a stranger, we experience divine joy as our reward for giving. Bless all gifts as they build your realm here on earth. Amen. Our communion hymn is in our red hymnal number 318, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether.
farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower. These simple elements are shared in community so that we may taste and see your goodness and become one body in Christ. For it is through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forevermore. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready. The body of Christ, the bread of life, the lifeblood of Christ, the cup of the blessing.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and every day. Amen. Amen.